welcome back. Another episode of Reality Hub. Today, the reality of your own bullshit. Ooh, the naughty word. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> There's so much of it, isn't there? Yes, there is. Um, and, and so much of our own. And it's that's exactly right. So that's what we're going to talk about. Facing up to your own inner bullshit. The crap we tell ourselves and accept as real. Mm. All the excuses we make in our lives and and that stops us from doing the things we really want to do. And um, yeah, and then cause the thing is you can you can bullshit your way through a lot of things. You can bullshit other people. You can you can actually do that a lot. But at the re- the reality is you can't really bullshit to yourself and lie to yourself and get away with it and actually live a life of authentic truth. Mm. Mm. That's deep. That's deep, yeah. I like it. Yeah. So you're a creator being, right? This is true. You create your own existence. That's kind of woo-woo. It's, uh, but is it? Well, look, it's accepted by the woo-woo clan. It's something <laughs> they talk about a lot. We're a little woo-woo, or a lot. Mm. And um, if you accept that you're a creator being, but you've got a whole bunch of programming and bullshit that you accept uh, as as normal, and you haven't examined your own belief systems or the stories you tell yourself, then um, let's break them apart today. Mm. What do we want to start with? Well, it being Reality Hub, what reality are you really creating? Yeah, your day-to-day life. Mm. Are you yeah. happy with it? Yeah. And I think it, this may come as a bit of a, I don't know, truth bombshell, but you're actually creating your life every waking moment of your day. So your actual reality is what you habitually and routinely do with the time you have in a waking state, okay? So I call it like the minute-by-minute reality. What are you actually doing on a day-to-day basis creating your life? And if that involves um, doing things that are distracting you from your goals or purpose or what you really want to do, then that's distractions, right? That's And if you're telling yourself, coming back to this inner bullshit, if you're... um, Say, for, for instance, talking the talk but not actually walking the walk, then you're not getting closer to what you really want to do and achieve in your life, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it's... You know, a, we're actually quite uh, conscious of that. Because yeah. here we are doing a show about this mm. and then we we check in with ourselves you yeah. know, when, when, we, when we pick up the phone and, and call each other. And I think we do a good job of um, reminding ourselves that if we're going to have a show where we examine your reality, then we've got to examine our own. Exactly. What am I doing in my life? Mm. Um, and yeah, and examining my own life. And what are my shortfalls? And, and, and am I listening to my inner bullshit? What excuses am I making in my life right now? The things that I want to improve on? And yeah, what am I doing and to overcome this, what we'll, we'll, are we walking our own talk? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's a look. It's really hard to face up to that stuff. Because, it is. It can be really confronting. Because if you're honest with yourself, <laughs> you know when you're letting yourself down. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, all areas of life, career, health, um, fitness, relationships, connection with others, you know, responsibilities as a parent or whatever it is. Yeah. 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 So you can't get away from the person looking back at you in the mirror so it all comes down to you yeah (laughs) be the man in the mirror yeah yeah it's true though isn't it it is very true um we were talking about running on an automatic program earlier so i wanted to bring it into the into the podcast do you have an example of that i think it's the yeah that comes down to the the stories that you've created and beliefs that you've created for yourself whether that's been programmed from an early age and then you find ways of um, consistently um, reaffirming those stories, right? And so that's part of your almost a subconscious program of your belief systems of what you – and it could be self-limiting belief systems. So in other words, 
you can be running on an automatic program and doing the same things that are not being beneficial to where you want to get to in life, um, uh, your goals, et cetera. So you're running this sort of bullshit program in the, in the <coughs> background, right? Well, it's of, like... Of limitations of the stories that play over and over again. You've got to sort of break that paradigm, that that program, if you like, go, hey, hang on a minute. I always react that way. Hang on a minute. I always come up with the same shit and bullshit excuse to this situation. So it's sort of, yeah, running that automatic subconscious program that you may or may not be aware of, but you can get away with because guess what? I'm in my own little world and maybe um, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not taking that step back and being aware of that program that's automatically playing out. I had a friend who um, got into a lot of dramas and didn't understand that they were, actively participating in those dramas mm. and their life was full of oh then this happened and that happened and oh it's happened you know this happens to me all the time and then i watched one of those dramas play out when they reacted to a financial situation because i think money triggers a lot of people <clears throat> it's a powerful component of the stuff that gives us um a good or a bad feeling if we have enough or not enough or the way we spend it or what we're responsible for. And they um, they freaked out about the cost of a trip to a dentist and really melted down and in the dental practice. And um, they said a whole lot of things and blamed that the dentist was out to get them and, and you know, how, how dare you confront me with this? You're trying to, this is an abuse of your power. And all it was was the dentist had quoted them how much for the work. Right. And, and what's so confronting about that is you're faced with probably how you've let yourself down, let your own teeth go, mm. which is another aspect of health, right? And yet, not only are you confronted with that, but you're confronted with the sheer cost of it. And the automatic program that ran for that per- that person was the same old um, drama-based program that they always ran when something bad happened or when they're confronted, they freak out and they get into defense mode. Mm. And that's an automatic program for them. And if they don't, or if you don't, um, see in your own programs in your life where you respond to things in certain situations. And of course, it doesn't have to be transactional situations like the cost of something. Um, you're, you're, you're going to repeat those things. You know, you're going to find yourself um, having them come up and you'll wonder why this or that problem always happens to you. And I see other people do it in relationships, why it's this or that partner that always does this to them. And you go, well... Mm. Uh, the one consistent component here in these scenarios is you, <laughs> right? That's what and I always say. Yeah. So it's time to face your bullshit. I mean, mm. if you're someone that says, oh, God, all men are pigs, <laughs> but not all men are pigs, but that's your running theme in life in that relationship situation, what are you doing that's, that's yeah. involving or attracting either men that are pigs or – being yeah. part of an equation that leads you to always come to that conclusion. Yeah. You've got to take an honest, right, look at yourself and what you are actually telling yourself. And then and, and realizing that what you're telling yourself, you are creating as thoughts and then creating as actions. And as you say, that example perfectly illustrated of, an, of, a, of a program and a drama playing out that could easily be avoided if you were aware of how you react and, and responded um, and then you to that reaffirm, situation. You reaffirm that reality again yeah, and again. in another situation or another, another scenario. And the thing is you think you can hide from that inner bullshit. You think you can just... Uh, wash over it or get a paintbrush out and, and put a new put a uh, lick of paint on it so to speak as mm. an as an analogy but you you really can't you, you know because you c- cannot hide from that part of you and you can't polish a turd no this is true <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly it'll always remain a turd right yeah that bit of bullshit is your turd yeah um and, and in that situation, it's like you're blaming everything else, your external environment, everything else out, outside of yourself when it all comes back to you. If, if you come from the place of 
you are responsible, that you're creating your reality, then that suddenly shifts all the power back to you. And this is the thing that we keep talking about on Reality Hub is claiming that power back and claiming that responsibility back and being responsible for what we think, what we feel, and what we put out there and the decisions we make, the things that we can control. And I look at my own life and I, and I always am reassessing, go, well, well what, are, what are these things that I can, can control in my life so that I can create the reality and start moving forward and start imprinting what I want to be doing and creating in this lifetime? Um, I've got to say, you remind me of, of when you talk about taking responsibility. Um, I was listening to the audio book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And, ah. and he talked about a story of a guy who decided to spend one year being absolutely responsible, for, believing in his mind and mm. accepting and behaving as though he was absolutely responsible for everything that happened in his life. Right. Turned out that was the story. I, no, I could be terribly quoting this, but it turned out I think that was the story of Buddha who decided to do that. Mm. But you were saying. Yeah, I, I, I have a bit of an analogy um, I think this is quite a well-known analogy to sort of being the creator of your life. But imagine that you are the producer, the director, the script writer and actor of your life. Um, And then denying the fact that you are not the creator of your reality is like sitting in the audience, right? And watching the stage, the show, the film being played out and then maybe complaining about this character or that character or why that mm. person said that to that person. Um, or you don't like the way that character's dressed. Um, and then you got to ask yourself, well, didn't you write the script? Didn't you direct? Didn't you produce? <laughs> Aren't you sitting in the audience? And being in the audience is like observing and being aware of your life, right? So I love that analogy of... Right, you are creating your story of your life. It's so profound. When you really get it, you you are creating the story of your life moment by moment, minute by minute, by what you think, by the actions you take, by uh, what you will and won't do, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so, yeah, so how about saying enough of this character with all this bullshit, right, and start imprinting a new version of yourself in the reality that you want to create? So I think that's really empowering when you start using those words and that terminology and start thinking and feeling from that aspect of yourself. But for a lot of people, it can be really scary because suddenly all the power and responsibility shifts to you. You can't blame the outside world. No more blaming. You can't take the bullshit anymore. You can't stand in front of the mirror and go, well, my life is shit and and, and this is not happening and I don't have the right relationship. Well, what are you actually doing about it, right? (laughs) Yeah. What are you actually yeah. on a day-to-day basis doing to create that reality? No one's going to hand that to you. Well, if they do, you're lucky. But then you basically are, um, I think Tony Robbins said this, that you are you feel fulfilled and you feel more happy when you actually achieve something for yourself, like a personal goal. If something gets handed to you, it's like... <laughs> It'll often be lost too. Yeah, it often yeah, you don't you did you didn't earn that. So so it's about getting real. It's about getting real with yourself. Actually and, and people who win a lotto often lose all their money. Yeah, yeah. Because they didn't really work hard for it. Mm. Not that I, I not that I don't wish anyone to not win lotto. I mm. know quite like to win it myself. You know, because like everyone who, who wants to win it, they all think, I could handle that better. This is true. Yeah. It's funny because on that note, like when in a former life, <laughs> <laughs> when I used to do events and promotions, I worked for uh, the New Zealand Lotteries. What are they called? Commission. I Commission. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, I got a, a f- sort of firsthand experience of meeting winners etc and and, and How yeah did you meet them I, i've met some winners yeah that won some big prizes and yeah I, it, it gives you more choice you can buy more stuff but it mm. doesn't necessarily feed the soul and yeah. make you happy on that level right <laughs> because more stuff and it, yeah you, you're absolutely right most people lose <laughs> that money yeah yeah 
Well, because, there's a few reasons, I think. Yeah, well, what, what, what do you think the reasons are? Well, <clears throat> well, let me come back to that. Yeah. i got to share with you um, something my father used to say to me. He said, um, if you if you were a, a typical Westie, I'll use uh, for our international law <laughs> listeners, I'm going to use West Auckland as an example, home of Bogan City, um, and you've got a couple of rusting uh, – Holdens on on your yard, and and inside your house you, you've got um, leopard print couches and velvet um, curtains, something like you know would have been appreciated by the hippies of the era of Led Zeppelin, and and that's your life, and that's and, and your current reality. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, take from that what you want, extend from that. That's the the sense of taste that those people have. That's the the uh, way they've surrounded themselves mm. <coughs> with the the money they've got. And you take people like that and you go, here you go, here's $5 million. Here's $20 million. You've won something. Then what you'll find they'll often do is they'll go and spend it on all the things that they value, the petrol head lifestyle they always wanted, um, weekends at the track, the most expensive new V8 something or other um, they'll upgrade maybe to a different suburb and then eventually in that new suburb they'll have a brand new house with leopard print couches that are brand new with brand new velvet curtains mm. still that hideous gaudy sense of taste will still be there and and the the drinking they'll do on the weekend will just be a higher class of beer. Yeah, and it's the same life. Mm. All you've done is provided that person or that family with a massive injection of energy, because the money represents energy, mm. the energy and the power to act and do more of what you already are. Yeah, and so why is it really that confusing that then? They're broke again at the end of the process because they were broke at the beginning of the process. They had never – I'm just going to paint a picture of an imaginary character and if you think it fits anyone you know or yourself, just own it. Just own it. Fuck it. If you didn't ever put any money aside, mm. if you're broke now, at the after your lotto win, unless you take serious attempts to change who you are as a person, you'll just be broke. On a, You'll be brokerer. You'll be Broker. more broke – not woke. You'll be more broke on a bigger scale. You'll just have you, – you, the bank will go, wow, you've got a lot of money. Here's a bigger overdraft. You've got – here's a black Amex. Here's, you know, more for you to spend. And so you'll just you'll just do more of what you've done on a larger scale. And at the end of it, you'll have the same shitty taste. You'll just have newer cars rusting on the on the front lawn and bigger debt. And, and um, if you're into a little bit of drugs, you'll just have a bigger drug dealer coming around to your house. And so what often people do in that regard is they just they become bigger than what they were. The the money just reflects an energy to be a bigger version of the same hideous self they were. So you take someone on the other hand who didn't have a lot of money but they always put 10% of their income aside to um something for the future and they've always um had a considered sense of taste and and a knowledge that maybe they can't afford much now but they're going they conservatively purchase things for themselves that are tasteful watch them win lotto that mm. that winner is going to take 10 percent of that income probably more because they, they have a money mindset that's healthy and they'll put all that aside and they'll pay off debts and so in most cases though people who are buying lotto tickets are poor because of the aspiration of winning because rich people don't buy lotto tickets because they've put money aside and made themselves rich they've manifested their own reality perhaps through a more traditional way. So that's a warning for people. I think that's a warning for anyone out there right now with a lotto ticket. Just before you go and check if you've won, why don't you start now with the process of making sure your your money's your affairs are in order? Um, and why do they why do they end up more broke? Because of everything I've said, plus they buy things that ultimately aren't continually funded by a yearly win of twenty million dollars. So they spend to a level that requires twenty million, but they've only had that one year. <laughs> they don't get that every year. Yeah, yeah. So then they they're at, they just got to sell up after a year or two and go, shit, I've, I've I've lost everything. But but at least those Westies had a good time, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it was a great year. <laughs> it was a great year with lots of alcohol 
and lots of uh, Car big racing. V8s and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, that's, and lots more pretend friends. <laughs> that's some really sound advice there. Thanks, Steve, for enlightening us with that amazing insight. Th- thanks. That, 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 that's, that's very helpful. Oh, I've won Lotto several times. <laughs> I know firsthand. I'm an inner Westie. It, I, from my experience, this you've got to, in order to, as you say, money is energy. So you've got to be creating some sort of benefit to the world, to society, in order to receive some sort of benefit back in terms of the way we use money, right? So if you're creating, so to create wealth, in other words, you've got to be creating some sort of benefit for society so that people, so so it's benefiting something or providing some product or service in some way, whether it's your skill set, your talent, a a product, yeah. So in, in simple terms, that's the way I've always looked at it in order to, Make money. <laughs> this is turning into. A... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just I'm adjust trying... your microphone. It keeps falling over. It does. Yeah. yeah what I'm trying to say, people, is you got to earn that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to earn that. Yeah, but money's not everything, right? Money's. Hang not on. Everything. There's a couple of things in there. Wealth um, can be measured in so many ways. You, you were saying, give. You've got to have something that's worthy. Uh, that gives back. Yeah, yeah. There there's, is a. There's, it's like an Tony exchange. Robbins. Yeah, there's a balance to it all. To the so, universe. Yes. Do you think that there's a fair sense that if you provide value? Yeah, that's what I'm trying. You you, you will be rewarded that. in due course, and it may not be money, but it might be in, in, come in a different form. I agree. I mm. think. Yeah. I really so if do you believe. just get a, a lottery one, what I'm trying to say, you didn't earn it, and if you, yeah, and if you don't know what to do with that money, well. If you didn't know before, then you won't know now unless you learn and grow. Yeah, well, yeah. that's right. Simple because that's because what and why this relates to what we're talking about in terms of our inner bullshit. Yeah, <clears throat> is because you have running automatic programs that uh, <laughs> you just drank my drink. That's brilliant. Why did you put it in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> because it's changing your microphone. <laughs> but um, when you talk about um, those automatic programs that mm. run, and when we face this topic of the reality of your bullshit, well, it's 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 the it's really the bullshit is the programs that are dysfunctional that continue to run, and so that's a money example, right, mm. of, of a bullshit program. But we're couching that within the topic of being a creator being, and as a spiritual person or as a open minded per- person, if you take that. That often thrown around concept of you are a creator being. Yeah, what does that really mean? There is actually a really pragmatic, physical, realistic approach to that meaning. If if you are a human being that has choices and the ability to make things, and that extends to not just making a house or a fence or a, a thing with your hand, you can make and create the reality you are, are in and manifest through imagineering as the seed of how you perceive and want and visualize mm. your existence yeah. to be. Yeah. I'm not talking about visualizing like the secret, although screw it, sure, like that if you want, mm. and imagine what you want, but then ensure that you take all the necessary steps leading yeah. to manifesting that outcome yeah. according to your plan, which is why people say talk about the value of writing down goals. I, I think then, then when you are a creator being who becomes more powerfully able to manifest a difference in your life, you want to make sure that those old automatic programs that are running are reassessed and changed and that you make a consistent effort to change things that are destructive destructive behaviors that hold you back <coughs> the um let's use some of the examples we talked about before um in relationships uh if you're consistently attracting the wrong person reassess what it is you mm. do if yeah. you're going to complain about it reassess why you always do it if you're always in a position where um your financial state isn't isn't good now i have a lot of sympathy for people who are in an impoverished position because I lived my life in a scenario where I grew up in a single parent household scenario, and it's and there are plenty of well written articles that say um, poor people can't save 
save their way out of poverty because poor people are just up against the wall, if you will, just surviving at level one mm. basic to get what they need. But if there is anything that you're doing that you can shift and change, then reassess it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you make some really good points there. And you, what you're saying there is, is is coming down to, you know, what what is your mindset? Is, is it nature or is it nurture? Can you... I, I believe you say we we're creator beings, so there's infinite potential. You just have to look at all the billions of people on the planet and the lives they are creating, right? Um, and there's a difference between living from a passionate place where you're feeling very passionate about what you want to create in this lifetime as opposed to just existing and getting by. We talked about that, the bottom line um, concept, I guess, and mm. thinking and thinking small rather than thinking big. Yeah, you got to think big. Or, along those lines, well, well, I can't do that. I can't be that person or have that kind of success or create that story. Who am I? So you, you're going into that kind of... Um, well, if you don't think big, you're never going to change out of the exactly, small reality yeah. you find yourself and, in. And big is just another way of saying different. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's aligned to your truth? What do you truly, really want to do and what's stopping you? And yeah, for a lot of people, uh, getting back to that sort of program is that it's getting past that programming. They don't think it's possible. Yeah, and that's the first step. It's like break that program mm. and, and realize that there are people out there. There's this, yeah, you can just, on the click of a button, you can see so many success stories of people actually living the, these lives. And you can model which, off which, it. Yeah, which means you don't have to live their life, but you can be inspired by them because they're living their passions and that's how i get going i get inspired by people who are actually doing the things that hey maybe i want to do or that resonate with me and speaks my language and fires me up and um yeah but you just got to realize that you are always the one creating that reality if you, if you can get that concept then it puts you in the driver's seat and then you can't blame anything or anyone else you, you can't blame your childhood, you can't blame your parents, you can't blame what the society is saying. You get really clear with that. You can transcend, you can move beyond that if you have the will, the determination, the desire, the passion, all those things. It's going to take hard work, hard work on yourself. It's not just going to happen overnight. It's consistently doing the right things to achieve those goals. And 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 it's true. When you start... I remember Bear Grylls saying this. He said, when you start pumping the right vibes out into the universe, you'll be surprised what coincidences, what support, what synchronicities show up in your life when you get in alignment and you're doing it for the right reasons, right? So if you're doing it because, hey, I just want to be rich, there's nothing wrong with that, but be very clear why you're doing what you're doing. Um, that's just my <clears throat> philosophy. Um, yeah, well, if you just want to be rich for the sake of being rich, You'll be, you'll be empty at the end of it. I always said, become a millionaire for what being a millionaire will make of you. Yeah, I but love that. not not for the money. Mm. The driver's seat. You said, yeah. put yourself in the driver's seat. So I want to that. I want to say this. So many of us are not living in the driver's seat. Instead, Hell no. Instead, we're living in the passenger seat in reaction to other drivers in our lives. Yep. And you mentioned, you, you know. Um, your parents, your childhood, society, what people think of you as <clears throat> restrictions. If you put yourself in the driver's seat, they're not restrictions, they're reference points. Yeah, you're giving you, your power away again. Yeah, so if you become and, a, a creator being that wants to get out and make a change, it's not like you deprogram and, and forget your past. No, no, you use those as referent po reference points from which you have come from. They are useful to your journey at this point in time in this existence. They are signposts and guide marks on the way of progress. But to people who don't understand that, they are not signposts of reference. They are restrictions. They are, I can't do this because I grew up like this. Look at the color of my skin. I'll never mm. achieve it looking like this. I'm too short. I'm too what. I'm whatever. Or no one in my family ever went to university before, so I couldn't do it. Mm. Be the first one. You can never Just, make a living being a writer or a dancer or in the creative arts field. 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's the end of our show. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, or things like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it comes back down to who told you that, right? Who really told you that, and why are you believing that? Because we seem to go through life believing those stories in that bullshit program, mm. and then reaffirming that and finding the um, the examples or the, the 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 correct scenarios and other people to to support us with that kind of bullshit story so that we're hiding from from ourselves we're, we're we are playing hide and seek but you cannot hide from yourself this this is getting right back to it again you can't hide from yourself no you can't you can act as if you can tell you can tell all of you can spend your whole life kidding yourself or you you start getting real and that, that's where a big shift happened in my life when, we, when I started applying that, call it logic, call it whatever you will, um, that philosophy or that mentality. And then I go, hang on a minute, this is what I can do. And, and then the flip side to that is start celebrating all the good things that you are creating as well, right? Start really and then encouraging yourself and giving yourself that extra motivation and and um, and and uh, what do you call it? Embodying all the all the imperfections and all, all the story that you've created so far. Okay, that's that's the chapters or the pages of your life so far. You can change that. You can start afresh. You can change. You can start just going okay, and start with little things. As practical advice, just start getting real. <laughs> that's that, that's really I, I, yeah. Cool. I'm trying. I'm trying to really um, communicate this in, in, a, in a logical and a and also, well, in a pragmatic but, way, yeah, yeah, in a step I, by step I, way. Yeah, well, um, what I like about that is you're you're actually saying um, face up to your bullshit, but also celebrate your changes, mm. because you yeah. must face your bullshit that holds you back. And and you could, for example, write down all your reasons why you can't be where you want to be, and there's your bullshit, or what you want to become. But then at the same time, you've got to celebrate all the changes and the things you have overcome because because it's, it's that duality of existence, the light and dark. You've got to face the program on both sides. You will be a mix of negatives and positives. For sure. I think if I um, look at this living your life as a creator being and living in the driver's seat as what you're promoting, as what you're saying is the best place to be, through through the examples you've given, yeah. What I think actually often happens because I believe we are all creative beings, but some of us are creative beings at a push. Only when it gets bad enough. Mm. Only only when <clears throat> things are so outrageously shit that you go, I've got to make a change. And I think an, an example of that is often we don't change until there is so much pain. You've just got no choice. Uh, for example, um. We often don't seek a better job till the one we have is just so shit. We have to. Agreed. And then, you know, you know what's wrong with that is you, you're living in reaction, not by design, right? You're putting up with the bad stuff till it's just really bad and only then you manifest a change. I mean, you are capable of manifesting a change before that. But at that point, you put out a clear signal. You act in the necessary way to, to say, apply for jobs, to give a clear signal to the universe. You reach that point of no more. I'm going to do something. And that, sadly, whilst that's great because it's a great example of your power and what you can do, great example of what you could do all the time, but sadly uh, that's often the extent of which, to which people express their creator being powers when it's really shit. You know, and lo and behold, they, they manifest that better job. They settle back into the life, however, after that of just reaction again. You know, they're back and they go, cool, I was in the driving seat for a little while, but let me uh, get out and be a passenger again. And uh, why? Why wait for that pain? Hmm. Why not do what you're suggesting, which is just stay in the driver's seat, face your shit, and this time look ahead with what you want to manifest and change and bring into your life and take the necessary small steps Um towards it and your goals as well as the necessary small steps of facing up to every little bit of programming that that is negative i think yeah what you just related there i think um sometimes it's it's just easier to not face your bullshit and just to hide and and to not face up to it because you 
but let's get real. Sometimes life is just not easy, right? So sometimes it takes doing the things that are uncomfortable. And I think that story you related, often it's, it's, it's a shame that we need pain and suffering to get us motivated. Carrot and stick. Yeah. And mostly, oh, I'm going to put myself out on a limb here, but mostly people go with the stick. Mm. Yeah. Because a world and universe of possibilities of anything you can have is out there. But that's an incentive which you either accept and go, yeah, yeah. I can do that. And that's why I'm going to make change. Mm. Or something rolls down your track and you've got to, and if you don't get out of the way, you're stuffed. The doctor says, mate, cholesterol's high. You don't do something, yeah. you're gonna have a heart attack. It's that whole. It's that whole. That's st- your stick. Yeah. Oh, well, better get on and do it. Make a change. Often people. Um, what's that analogy where the ambulance has already gone off the cliff? Oh, the ambulance <laughs> at the bottom of the cliff. Yeah, the no, bottom of the cliff. No. <laughs> the ambulance <laughs> didn't go off the cliff. Oh, the ambulance is at the bottom. Is of the cliff? at the yeah. bottom. Oh yeah, thanks. That's in the Dukes of Hazard. The ambulance yeah, yeah. goes off the cliff. <laughs> yeah, it reminded me of that. Yeah, and I yeah. get it. I get it. I get that we want things to be easy we want to and i think sometimes we just want to manifest something instantly we just want to think it and believe it and boom it's there don't stop believing (laughs) yeah but that's what we want we want it instant yeah and yes for sure some things do manifest instantly but yeah there's a process there there is um process to to the correct creation process right so a a tall tree doesn't just become a tall tree it goes through the stages of growth and and Mm. weathering storms and going through a process so um as an analogy so to speak Mm. um but yeah to recognize that you have such tremendous power within you as a creative being and getting back to that whole thinking big versus thinking small who am i to to achieve this who am i to not listen to what i was programmed as a child and i'm not that talented who am i to then step out in from the shadow into the light and start embracing my true light and my what i call my superpower which is who i really am and what i was really here to do on this planet and i think to not at least attempt to, to to live that is a dishonor to who you really are. To your existence. To your existence, right? Because you, you have the capability. It's not like it's a dishonor you can't to the do space it. that you take up on this planet. Yeah, there are so many examples of people with so many setbacks and so many things going against them, and yet they overcome every one of those setbacks. Hmm. That have that there are people that have so many opportunities. And everything going for them, and they might self sabotage the success, or they might have all the talent, but they won't put in the hard work, and they and they won't embrace it, and for whatever reason, and that comes back down to your your self limiting beliefs, and and what the the story you're creating and telling yourself, and why, and um, and as I say, living your full potential is not necessarily achieving world honors or putting some sort of status on it or putting some sort of label on it well i achieved this and i did this and i it starts with little things within your own being that empower you and make you feel happy and make you feel really good about yourself and proud of your yourself right so it's not measured by an external um indicator necessarily well i think we're talking about your non-negotiables Oh, because yeah, <clears throat> I can talk to aspects of this, I think, but if you want to make a change in your life, there are certain things that you must follow through on. So a good one, I think, is say yeah, give us, weight give loss, us an example, right? If you want to um, lose weight, get fit, and this is something that is a process I'm I'm working through myself. There are things you have to do. Now, whether that's you see a weight loss coach every week to weigh in, which was a thing, you know, then you've got to do that to someone to be accountable for, or whether it means facing up to what you eat is um, 
really unconscious you just you just throw things in it you don't think so much about mm. planning it then you've got to face up to those weaknesses of well then you better plan better um get accountable join a program you know be part of something but the non-negotiables and i think you do this really well <coughs> is you provide and for every day something that is um bare minimum attendance at the gym or bare minimum time out to do xyz even if it's 15 minutes people often don't realize that even 15 minutes at the gym is better than no minutes at the gym although you'll turn up for 15 and probably do half an hour it's still better than nothing you know in in terms of the aggregated combined total over the week it makes a difference you know it's better than um going oh it's only going to be half an hour so i won't go so you miss seven half an hours well if you had seven half an hours that week that adds up right uh, three and a half hours worth of gym time is better than none that week. So I think um, non-negotiables are a good way of describing the minimum efforts that you accept are absolutely necessary to be the creator being that is going to make the changes you need to make. So what are your bare minimum standards and when you face up to your bullshit of the things that hold you back and the things that you could do and you weigh those two up against each other, here's what I have potential for and here's where I'm sabotaging myself and this is my programming and this is my bullshit, then make a plan and give yourself the the absolute minimum requirements to make a change. And even those absolute minimum minimum, minimum requirements will incrementally build up like interest to bring you into that state of change. And I often find if you're beating yourself up about not being where you want to be in your career and your life and your finances and your health and fitness, the minimum effort made often reduces that stress dramatically. Hey, I may not be a millionaire yet, but I've put 10% aside every week from my pay. Mm. I may not be as fit as I could be, but I went to the gym today. And I've actually, I look back, I've done the last five days in a row and they weren't the heaviest, hardest, you know, full on workouts, but I'm really proud of that. And although I look in the mirror and I'm still not the change I want to see, I feel good that I'm trying and I can justify I'm actually giving it a good shot. And then you just keep on in that direction and you fight the self-sabotage that comes in naturally to go, you know, give me another Mars bar. <laughs> you go, ooh, ooh, yeah. you do your best. And if you do, you, you keep, you know, what is that story of um, an aeroplane is 99.9% of the time off course on its trip, but yeah. it always course correct. This is true. This if is you forget true. to course correct, you yeah. end up in the Antarctica. Yeah. Look, in a nutshell, what you're describing there is self-care. Yeah. Right. And and a lot of people have this perception or belief that putting yourself first is selfish, right? But you you need to um feed your own well being in order to feed others or to give and yeah, it's it's just it's doing the little things on a daily basis that are important to you because what happens is if you start sacrificing those things for someone or something you start getting resentment and you start blaming that other thing well Mm. i couldn't Mm. get to the gym because of this or i couldn't go for that hike or go to the beach or catch up with that person and spend quality time because of this and a lot and a lot of people say well i don't have the time and of course, that's bullshit. It's bullshit. Because you make time for the things that are important to you, that are a prior priority. We all have the same amount of chronological time in the day. Some people wake up real early and have more mm. time in their day, and some people wake up a bit later. But, yeah, it's the quality of time that you spend doing the things that make you feel good. It's really simple. There's... You, yeah, and they are the non-negotiable. In in my life, they are. It's it's like this is this is a priority for me, right? And setting boundaries, saying no, it can be a non-negotiable. Negotiable. <laughs> I'm having struggle with this. Don't know where non-negotiable. I picked that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, some people some people want to be people pleasers and say yes to yeah. everything. There are boundaries. Yeah. You go hang on a minute, and that that comes back to once again, um. 
empowering yourself. It keeps coming back down to that and doing it for yourself and going hey i'm doing this for myself and and setting an example by your actions and um yeah so that's what i've got to share on that topic so is self-care selfish no it's not selfish (laughs) (laughs) we're not listening (laughs) (laughs) absolutely (laughs) but um Mm. i think there are there are parents out there who um Feel they don't have enough time in the day, being a parent. Oh, yeah, and they, they look. That becomes a, a reason. I'm not going to use the word excuse. Yeah. I respect that parents have got a lot of capacity sometimes to do the things that, mm. that are um, yeah. self self care related, people, and they consider it selfish that they're not putting their children first. Yeah, and and we all make sacrifices, right, for for the things that we feel um, we want in life. There's a sacrifice for anything. If you if you want to become um, a world-famous ballet dancer. You've got to put in the time and the work and the training, right? Mm. You've got to sacrifice something for something else. If mm. you want to start a business and make it really successful, you've got to, in some ways, when you own a business and become self-employed, you work even more hours. Mm. You have less time because mm. it, it, all, it all falls on you. You want to make it, it, it a success. So we're all doing this juggling act that's, the reality of life, but I guess it's coming becoming clear of what's your prior, priority and what's important to you for your well being. And uh, you know, Reality Hub's philosophy is all about balance, well being, mm. and looking after yourself and 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 improving yourself and and that whole yeah the personal development and and doing it for you, right? Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, back to the parent thing. If you don't look after yourself, how how good can you be as a parent? If you don't take that time exactly. out for a ten minute walk, mm. if you can't compromise somehow to um, get a little bit of exercise in, have some me time, some meditation time, and if me time to you always used to be you know two hours drinking hard, sure, maybe that's not the me time you can take now. Maybe there's a compromise, but maybe it's uh, some deep breathing and uh, in 20 minutes mm. just um, – I think yeah. a lot of parents spend extra long on the toilet for that reason. They just want some time out. You know? <laughs> oh, so that's what it is. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, that's what it is. So, wow, good episode. Mm. Um, I want to remind uh, folks to please um, uh, hit subscribe and uh, tune in. We've got some amazing guests scheduled. Oh for the yeah, future. Uh, can't say at this point. But God, so this excited! Yeah, so um, excited. Yeah, I mean, the guests that we've got coming up will inspire you. Mm. I'm sure. That, I mean, they're inspiring to us, and they're just such amazing, amazing individuals. So, I'm so looking forward to that. Yeah, me so too. So looking forward to it. So follow us on Facebook, Instagram, um, check out our website, uh, reality, realityhub.love, <coughs> and uh, and make sure that you're um you're, you're tuned in uh, for the next podcast. Hit subscribe so that it, you get that notification, and um, and we'll see you there. Great. All right. Till next time, guys. See you later. <laughs>